Hey everyone and welcome to 100th video of the Learn PHP the Right Way series. We've surely come a long way to get to this point. It has almost been uh, two years since I published the very first video in this series. Now we are very close to the finish line, but we're not finished with the PHP series just yet. There are still a few topics that I want to cover, but I think these topics are best covered with a project instead of using some sample code. So in this video we're going to review the projects that we will be working on for the remainder of the series. Before we do that, I want to take a second to thank all of you for all of your support and kindness that you've shown me throughout the series. I honestly cannot thank you enough. You've been the greatest motivator for me to keep going and keep making these tutorials. So thank you and thank you again. Also, please take a moment and give yourself a little pat on the back, especially if you've been following along the series and have watched multiple videos. We've covered the very basics of PHP in the first section, intermediate PHP in the second section with OOP and some advanced PHP in the third section. We went from writing a very basic procedural PHP to object-oriented PHP and then to using and understanding more advanced topics and frameworks. Now I know at the very first video of the series, I said this series would be split into three sections, basic, intermediate and advanced, which is true, but I decided to split the third section and create a kind of like a subsection dedicated to the project. So the project section will be labeled as section P, where P stands for project and videos will be numbered as P1, P2, P3 and so on. As always, the lesson numbers will be in the thumbnails within the description of the videos and within the GitHub outline repo for which the link is also in the description. That being said though, all of the remaining videos will still be within this giant PHP series playlist. It's just that we are adding an additional section to be more organized. Alright, so let's talk about the app. The app that we'll be building is going to be a simple, very light expense tracker app. It is not going to have all the fancy features that expense trackers or budgeting apps on the market currently have, but it will have enough stuff there for us to practice some of the skills we've learned in this series. The project does have a name and it's called Xpennies because you guys voted for it and it even has a logo and a domain to go with it. Also this project can be a great starter point for you to continue on and keep adding more features to it as you see it fit to practice your skills. Now let's talk about the possible features that we'll be working on. The following list is not in any order and it does not indicate the number of videos either. It's basically just the base or brainstormed ideas of the features that I would like us to implement together. For example, we have user authentication because almost every app will need some sort of user login, registration and forget password features, right? So we'll build those and possibly even email verification and the two-factor authentication either via email or SMS or both. This will give us the opportunity to cover some security related topics like CSRF, password hashing, rate limiting and so on. Next we have the core of the project which is transaction management. Things like being able to create transactions manually and categorize them. In addition to creating transactions manually we should also be able to import transactions from CSV files and so on. This will allow us to practice a lot of the things that we've covered and learned in this series. We will also cover some additional topics like remote file storage using third-party services like S3 or something similar to store transaction receipts and files. And last but not least, we will need to have some sort of simple dashboard where we'll show statistic cards for things like total income, total expense, total transactions, maybe aggregate them by categories and so on. This will allow us to practice more of our skills and learn some new things as well like caching with either Memcached or Redis. So let's talk about the tech that we'll be using. As far as the backend goes, of course, we'll be building it using PHP. We will use Slim PHP framework as a starting point to handle the routing and request response and middleware stuff. We've already covered the basics of Slim PHP and have set it up with the stack that we'll need for this project in the last couple of lessons. We'll use Doctrine ORM, migrations, some Symfony components, Twig, PHP DI, and so on. So that should be good enough to get us started and you should already be familiar with that because we spent quite some time on those topics. As far as the front end goes, 
I must tell you and warn you that I'm terrible at design. So don't expect some fancy UI, we will most likely use bootstrap mainly and twig for our templates. I'm thinking of providing the UI entirely so that you don't have to worry about writing JavaScript or HTML CSS because this course is all about PHP. I will just leave some placeholders in the templates that can be filled in so that we can focus on PHP. As I mentioned this course is all about PHP and I don't want to spend a lot of time writing markup or JavaScript within the videos. So I'll probably do those kind of stuff off the recording and provide them to you in the repository for the appropriate level. Now speaking of the repository, the link to the repo is in the description of this video and it's a different repository than the one we've been playing around throughout the series. The main branch of the repo will always be the latest version of the app that we'll be building, and individual branches will be named after the lesson number which will contain the changes specific to that lesson. So if you want to follow along step by step, then you should be using the branches named after the lesson that you're watching and of course each lesson will have the link to the repo in the description. Otherwise, if you just want to get the latest version of the app, you can use the main branch which will always contain the up-to-date version of the app. The final version that will deploy to production will be the main branch. Something I want to mention is that there are many different ways of implementing and doing things. So the way that I will do it does not mean is the only way. You can apply your own methods and do things in your own way way which is completely fine and I actually encourage you to do so. Play with it, break it, fix it and learn it. That's the best way to learn in my opinion. So this is it. If you're excited about this project and like my content, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. It will really help me out with YouTube's algorithm. Also make sure to hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified when new videos are published. You can also follow me on Twitter because I post updates there as well and it's just a good way to see what I'm up to and what I'm working on next. As always, please feel free to post any questions, concerns or feedback down in the comments. So thank you so much for watching and thank you again for all of your support. I'll see you in the next video where we'll begin working on the project.